Okay, so good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone. So let us uh, start our uh, day one on the advanced Linux shell scripting session. So today uh, we are going to start this session, and uh, today is a day one session. So, so guys, this is our uh, running notes. Okay, so I'll be publishing or I'll be sharing these running notes uh, uh, every day in our uh, drive, so that you can uh, refer to these notes also. And uh, 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 and uh, this would be a common notes, or else I can even create a separate separate notes for every day. So today, for this today is 9th September, right? We'll have one note, and for tomorrow I'll create separate note for that. Okay. So today, so today is a uh, uh, day one actually, and the timing is 8:53 a.m. Uh, IST timing, and today the date is 9th actually. We didn't see a screen. I did share my screen. Oh. No, Rajesh. Uh, okay, I think somewhat it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, one more thing. Uh, if any uh, video or audio lag is there, okay, and uh, if you feel like, okay, you're not hearing somebody, maybe there could be a problem at your end also sometime, okay, or there could be a problem from my end. Please, uh, no, please let me know so that we can correct this issue. Okay. Okay. So guys, can you share, can you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So now, so guys, we will be learning about the advanced Linux shell scripting. So, but before we learn, as I said, like a uh, lot of people uh, don't have a knowledge on Linux or they're very new to Linux. So we'll be starting our understanding about the Linux operating system itself. Linux operating system. Okay. Or in, in general, in general, we'll be learning about what is an operating system. So, can you tell me, or can you, uh, can you tell me, or can you give me a textbook definition about what is an operating system? You might have learned in your engineering days or in your college days. What is an operating system? Can anyone tell me? Unmute yourself and tell me. It is a software actually which can be communicated with the hardware. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So a software which can communicate with the hardware. Good. Any other uh, any other answers, guys? A set of programs. Good. A set of programs, or else uh, a software as a process that can be easy for us to, to mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. hands on. So. Uh, OS level. Mm. Mm. Correct. I think the Yasmin is unable to see what she did. Is it? Okay, Yasmin. <coughs> yeah, uh, Yasmin, uh, can you see it now? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you can see it now. Yeah. So now, guys, uh, so uh, whatever you have answered, yeah, it's fine. Okay, everything, uh, whatever the answer you have given is right. So it is a set of program or it is a software that interacts with the hardware or it is like a process. Like there are multiple differences are there, right? So how you can define an operating system, right? So an operating system is a set of programs. Is a set of programs or models that controls and coordinates the hardware resources for different application programs. What do you mean by that? Like you have so many hardware resources, right? Like for example, I'm using a laptop, right? In the laptop, inside my laptop, you could see that I'm having this screen, right? The screen, we call it as a terminal, right? Screen, we can even call it as a terminal, right? Uh, we have a CPU, you know that we have a RAM memory, right? We have an audio video, you know, like uh, audio or video, uh, 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 it's actually, you will see that, the, and you are having a network, uh, network cards. You are having so many different hardwares in your laptop on your system, actually. So whenever a user want to interact or he want to communicate with any kind of an hardware, he cannot directly communicate with it. I am a user, 
I'll say that, sir, I want to interact with the hardware. I want to interact with the with the keyboard or, or I want to interact with the uh, with the system, with any kind of a device, whatever it is connected. I cannot just directly communicate with it. A user, an end user cannot communicate with it. So there has to be an interface. By using that interface only, right, uh, any user can communicate with the end hardware and that is via with the help of an operating system. So operating system is that it's a set of program or it's a model that controls and coordinate the hardware resources for the different application programs or for the different users we say. So guys, I'll be using a lot of times I'll be using these MS paints so that I will be showing the diagrams and everything, right? So you have this hardware, suppose this is a hardware. You have this hardware, this is the hardware. This is hardware. This hardware could be anything. As I said, it could be CPU, it could be RAM, it could be keyboard, or it could be mouse or anything, right? And here we have a user actually. We have a user. So whenever this user wants to communicate with the hardware, he cannot directly communicate with it. He cannot directly communicate with it. Because why he cannot communicate with it? Because the hardware itself has a different, like, uh, uh, has a different protocol to communicate, right? So this hardware itself has its own firmware to communicate, right? A user cannot directly communicate with, with any kind of an application or uh, any kind of API. He need an interface. By using that interface only, the user or the application can communicate the hardware. So user or application. User or application, whenever they want to communicate communicate with the hardware, they can cannot directly communicate with, they can communicate only via with the help of an operating system. So we have an operating system here. In between the user and the hardware, we have an operating system or we call it the OS. In short, we call it the OS, right? So the operating system, will control and coordinate the hardware resources for the different application program. So whenever a user want to communicate with the hardware, the user will first communicate with the operating system. And then from the operating system, it will communicate to the hard end hardware. This is how the communication happens. Uh, guys, my voice is really breaking. No, sir. No, 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 sir. no, 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 Please uh, check from your end, guys. Okay, thank you. Okay, so a user first he has to communicate with the OS or the operating system, and then he has to communicate with the hardware. And the and in turn the operating system will communicate with the hardware. This is the flow; it always happens actually, right? Suppose for example, if I go here in my operating in my machine, you could see my desktop, right? Suppose you say, sir, I want to open the Google.com website. What I'm going to do? I am going to say that, sir, open, uh, launch your uh, any kind of a browser, Google browser or Microsoft Edge browser, any browser. You'll do one thing. You'll go and you'll just do a double click like this. Okay, a browser will get open. It'll get launched, right? It'll get launched like this. And now what happened? Right in the URL or in the URL bar, you'll say Google.com like that. You'll just and enter. So you are under running an application here. As an end user, you're running an application. So here, you are invoking an application here. So here, what happened, right? You're invoking an application here. What is that application? You're invoking a Google Chrome application. As a user, when you are invoking a Google application, Chrome application, who is going to serve the service for you? Who is going to make sure that the Google Chrome is getting loaded or it is launched? It is an operating system. So as a user, whenever you are running an application or you want something to achieve, you're going to run an application. So as part of execution of that application, the operating system will take care of everything. So whenever a user will try to launch it, what happened? The communication happened from the user or the application to the operating system. And from the operating system, it interacts with the hardware. And finally, the, this hardware will return some value to you. And finally, you could see that some application is getting executed. This is how with, it happens with everything. So whenever you are running an any application, whenever a user is logging into the application, he will always communicate with the hardware. With Sorry, he will always communicate with the operating system. Without the operating system, you cannot communicate with the hardware. So operating system is nothing, but it is an interface between the user and the op hardware, you have to say. So what is our definition? One more definition, guys. Operating system is an interface between the user or the application, it interface between user and the application 
and the hardware. Right? And the hardware. Right? So, any questions, any doubts in this? No? Okay, good. So, now, so what is an operating system is made up of? As I said, so it is made up of some set of programs or some set of models. Okay, fine. Do I have to really understand all this thing? No, sir, it's not really required. So operating system is something like, okay, you try to communicate from the user, you give some inputs to the operating system, the operating system will return an output to you. Similarly, in Linux, because many of you know, I execute some command. I'll execute some ls command. I execute some date command. I execute some who command. Who is executing all these commands? Your operating system is executing all these commands, actually. So as a user, when you're hitting any command, or whenever hitting any application or when you're running it, the operating system one which is going to take care of the execution of that program. So when you, as a user, when you're running an application or whenever you're executing any commands, the control will go to an operating system. And the operating system will return a value. Always it has to return a value or it has to return a return a return status value, we say. Right. So operating system will take an input and finally it will do some, it does some kind of a processing and finally the output will be returned to the user of the application back. This is how the operating system works. Operating system, it is not like it only takes input. It has to take an input. It has to process it, whatever the input is given by the user of the application. And finally, it has to even return the output also. Clear? So that's how operating system. So operating system, it's a set of program or it's a set of software or set of models that controls and coordinate hardware resources to the different application programs of the user. Right? That is how I have defined it. An operating system is a set of program or the models that controls and coordinate the hardware resource for the different application program. Now, guys, now what happened, right? There are so many application programs are there. It will, it is about to get executed or you need to run like a lot of application program. Like you have an application program one, application program two. What is an application also we'll discuss after some time, but try to understand very high level now. Application three and application four. You need some, you have some set of applications, right? Or you need to invoke or you need to run all these applications. So these applications are in a user level or in, this is invoked by the user, user some user. And here below, you have an operating system. I'll also draw this circle only so that you'll understand. Okay, this is a hardware. Sorry, this is the operating system or the OS, we say. And this is again the hardware at the below. You know, you can see that this is a kind of a layered architecture where at the top you have something a user of the application. Below you have something like an operating system. And further below or at the very lower level, you have something as a hardware. Now, as I said, one of the definition about the operating system that it is a set of models that controls and coordinate the hardware resources. So what do you mean by that? Now guys, whenever you run any application, right? Usually every application, it has some set of requirements. Like for example, it might require, it might, there is a requirement that, okay, the application run one, it might need at least minimum of two MB of RAM memory, okay? and 0.5 core CPU, or as one core CPU. That would be the requirement for this application to run. If this kind of a requirement, if this much requirement is not provided by your operating system, this application cannot get executed at all. It cannot start also, it cannot run. So there is a, some kind of a requirement for that application itself to run. So what happened, right? Application one, it might require this kind of requirement, right? It needs a two MB of RAM, one core CPU. The application two, it might needs around uh, some uh, 100 MB of RAM. It might be some uh, big application. You might be running some database. Assume that you're running some MySQL database or Oracle database may, where you might need tons of uh, memory. You might need some 10 GB of RAM memory, right? 10 GB of RAM memory, and you need some uh, uh, four CPU. This is a huge application. It means that, oh, this could be some kind of a database, right? Application three, it might need. So each and every application, it has its own requirement, hardware requirements. So who's going to fulfill all those hardware requirements? Your operating system. Your operating system fulfill all those requirements for each and every application program so that it can comfortably, it can run or it can comfortably get executed. 
So your operating system, it controls and coordinates the hardware, hardware resources for the different application program. Each and every application program, it has some kind of requirement. Your operating system is going to fulfill that requirement for that application so that the application starts executing. So what are the hardware resources are there? The operating system understand, okay, this is the set of hardware resources are there. How it happens again, because this hardware resources, what are the hardware are there, right? That hardware are getting registered with the operating system first. Once the registry happens, then the operating system will get a control on the hardware. It understand, okay, this is the hardware I have. Okay, in my machine, there is a 100 GB of hard drive is there. Okay, I'm having 16 GB of RAM. I'm having an eight core CPU. Okay, I'm having all kind of a, like a, a graphic card, video card, audio card. Okay, network card, sound card, so many things, hardware are there. All these hardware are getting registered with the operating system first. Once it registered, then the operating system will get an I, uh, then the operating system will get an information about the hardware resources. So during execution of any application program, the operating system can better manage all the hardware resources completely. It usually it gets the control, complete control of this hardware also. So that's the reason an operating system, it can provide any kind of a hardware requirement for each and every application program. So any doubts you have till here? No? Okay, good. Some of you, if you have any doubt, you can mute, sir. You can mute, uh, sorry, you can unmute and you can ask me. Okay, good. Hello, sir. Yes, madam, go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, that uh, RAM and storage and all CPU, like one core other uh, operating system will provide to all the applications, right, sir? Hmm. Sir, uh, from what world is the raw RAM and all those things? From where it will take? From hardware only, no, sir? Hardware only, yes. Okay. Okay. Hardware, here you have a RAM. RAM is there. Here you have okay. a hard drive. Okay, okay. Here you have some kind of a chip. You have something like CPU. All these are hardware only. Okay. RAM, hard disk, everything. This is the hardware. This is all. This is the lower below layer, actually. We say, right? So whenever any application runs, right? So application has some kind of requirements that operating system will fulfill. The operating system will provide all the details. It it will communicate with that hardware and it gives the resources. Resources. It communicates with that specific hardware and it gives the resource to the each and every application. Okay, sir. Got got. It allocates, it allots that hardware or it allots the resources for each and every application. Clear? Okay, fine. Good. So now, <clears throat> so guys, so when this operating system concept uh, came in and where you know, people were uh, developing this operating system and all, right? Uh, you know, like uh, very long back, like uh, one of the very uh, famous operating system which people were using were Unix operating system. Right, Unix operating system came into existence, I think, in 1975. Right, so 1975 by AT&T Lab, the Unix operating system was released uh, uh, in the 1985. Before 1985 itself, not 85, sorry, 75, sorry. So in 1975, the Unix operating system was, uh, was released actually. Right, and uh, people started using this Unix operating system. Later, what happened after some time over the period of like 10 or 15 years, uh, you came with a DOS operating system, and then the Microsoft Windows operating system came. So, on so the journey of you know uh, coming up with a lot of operating started from the Unix itself, actually. Okay, so uh, so the layer, the, the main foundation of designing of the Unix operating, everything was actually done by the AT&T lab, actually. So, AT&T lab, as you know, many of you know that this is the organization where uh, you know, like. Uh, a uh, lot of uh, you know like uh, great people uh, they came from this place actually okay AT&T lab and uh, the first unix was released actually okay i'm not uh, really i will not go in detail about the history or something because it might bore for someone but yeah there are some important things other which i need to uh, take up some name and uh, i need to cover up those things i will cover but i will not go in detail uh, because it will drag me a lot of time in explaining about this uh, theoretical part everything about what happened how it was designed and who are the people so it will really take but i will not go into very much in detail but yeah we will co cover in a very upper layer about all these things now so when the unix operating system was released right, a lot of people had an interest to learn or understand what is this operating system is all about what are the different components of this operating system how this operating system works how the operating system actually communicates the hardware there are so many things you know came into it where people started learning about this entire operating system they want to learn they want to understand so that's the reason what happened right at that time they coined a, per, a term known as system programming 
people system level programming people who usually work on operating system people who work on op operating system level or people who really work on some kind of a, um, a device driver level they were they were called as a system level programmers or system level programming so people who were interested in learning this thing they were they used to call as a system level and the people who started learning and after that you know that many languages were derived right c came c++ came lisp language came uh, prolog language came earlier uh, language by the fortran had come fortran came and then the c c++ many languages were derived and people started writing an application by using these languages right you have a language like you know like you have a language like c c++ right c c++ right uh, lisp language prolog or a, like many kind of a like fortran language and after that you know there was a very big boom came into the market when they when we came up with the java language you know sun microsystem company right they came up with this java language right so a very big boom happened in industry because right through the java language you can write a lot of web application programs actually right and slowly like a lot of other uh, things came like you came up with the html you came up with the uh, you know you came up with uh, many other languages like for example you came with uh, python you came with uh, uh, go language you came with uh, react js node js my god so many languages they came actually So what happened? That people found very much interesting in learning these languages and writing an application. So those people who learned this programming language and started writing an application, those were called as a application level programmer. So those people who are writing an application or writing an application, those were called as a application level programmer. application programmer, which our application level. So if you see broadly. we have categorized into two categories now so application level programmer the people who write in the application layer or the application level and the people who work on a system level or who work on operating system they are called as a system level programmer or sometimes some people even called as an embedded programmer also right and some people uh, sometime you will be called as a firmware engineers or firmware people who design firmware who work on the firmware level they call as a firmware engineers clear guys okay so that's how so okay now so unix operating system was derived in the year 1975 by at&t labs right and uh, at&t lab and a lot of people were interested in learning uh, operating system and making uh operating system okay uh they were called as system level programmer okay the people oh my god what happened okay i think i uh, whatever route has gone actually uh okay so uh, yeah i did some mistake uh atnt lab okay fine so people who are interested in understanding the operating system what called as system level program people who were interested in understanding or learning the uh, learning the uh, like learning the programming languages for example like c c++ java right and uh, so on right and sorry i even uh, oh my god what is it stuff okay uh dot net right so they started coding the application using these languages 
and they are called as application application level developer okay now okay good so now uh, now so when the operating system came into the market and when people started using operating system right unix operating system was first derived later like uh, windows operating system came then later linux and mac OS, mac uh, already came along with the uh, windows itself uh, but uh, many operating system came into the market but the point was that actually, that not many were aware of this how it internally works and what are the different components of the operating system people re, uh, didn't have that kind of a knowledge or information because this information were never shared at all so who are designed whichever company designed an operating system right they never released any kind of a information on the design aspect of the operating system what is this operating system all about okay how it that it works no it was not at all discussed in any forum nowhere only the core team people who were working who were part of that company right? only those people only had some knowledge on that otherwise it was not very open to everyone when it when you see the unix operating system even unix operating system at the very early stage they never uh, release any kind of a design of how exactly the operating system works everything they didn't release that uh, information at all later after some point of time right they started releasing the det details about that so if you take an example of microsoft microsoft company they never tell about how exactly the windows os works right because uh, i mean it's a proprietary operating system because they have put lot of hard effort and many manpower they have uh, you know they have used to design and develop and everything how they are going to simply release all those information right they cannot do it still even today also windows operating system not many people does not many people know how it internally works we know only to we know only from the user level how we can make use of that operating system but when you get inside if you want to get inside an operating system try to understand how things works oh, no we will not be able to know at all because the informations are never been shared right so now but still what happened after some time when the unix came to the market in 1975 and uh, in the 1980s a very robust and a production unix operating system was released actually during that time in 1980s what happened that at&t lab right they released many of the official uh, papers many of the documentation many uh, in many different forums they released the information about the operating system and they even discuss about the how how, how the operating system was designed right what are the different models which are involved in this uh, in this uh, operating system? everything was were uh, details were released so during that time like people started learning about this operating system very well so 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 what are the different so what is operating system made up of made up of or what are the components or what are what are the models what are the models in operating system guys this is a very important i mean uh, this is a stepping stone from here we have to learn it because each and everything whatever learn in the linux right uh, you need to even understand uh, basic thing about the uh, different uh, set of models what is the operating system you have to have some knowledge it's not like that okay why i have to learn all this it's, it's not like that you need to learn everything here okay and whichever information which i am sharing all these informations are very useful it is not like that okay uh, i mean i need not to give concentrate on that, this much on all this it's not like that whatever i uh, whatever i'll be telling you in the class right that is all important sir whichever i feel like okay it is not important i will not discuss at all those things okay so now what is this operating system made up of so basically this whole entire operating system it is made up of some five components actually what are those five com important components five components anyone tell me if anyone knows about file system file system management process management memory management device management and network management so these are the five components of operating system of the os operating system uh, rajesh do you have to really learn all these things no not really required sir i'm just telling in a very high level okay you have to just keep this thing in your mind that's all you know you need not because we are not a system we are not a system level programmer where we need to learn all these things yes but we need to have a very high level understanding or knowledge on that right 
So now these are the different models which were designed and they integrated together and everything they call as an operator. So Rajesh, is this five components made up of, it is five components together, we call it as an operating system. Yes, the, all these five components together, we call it as an operating system. Yes. So whether these components are individual entity, whether they, these components, uh, components are individual models, yes, sir, they all are individual models. Okay, fine. Does these models interact with each other? Definitely they have to interact with each other. Without interacting with each, with each other, right, these models, right, the operating system together will never work at all. You cannot say that only file system alone will work, only process management will alone work. No, they all are different components or different models, but yet they have to interact with each other to achieve a common goal or to, uh, to run to, or to execute anything that right? they have to interact with each other. Okay, good. Now, sir, what is this uh, file system memory management? Do you have to really learn? Not really, but I will give a one line information or one line definition about all these things. Now, why we need a file system? See, file system is not, but it's a software, sir. It's a software. It's a software which is used for communicating with any kind of a files. So as you know that as a user, you could see that. So you will say, sir, I want to go to some drive. I want to go to the C drive. So you'll go to the my PC or my computer, go to the C drive. So you click on this, go to some folder, click on this, go to the audio. So you could see that you're navigating into some path and you're achieving a file or you're looking into the file. You're navigating. How you're navigating, sir? How you are, uh, you are doing it? Because your system is allowing you to navigate like this. How you're navigating and where you uh, and you're trying to reach to some particular path where you're finding a file actually because there's a file system which is running. So file system will help you to even navigate to the path where you can find a file or a directory or a folder. Okay, sir, you are creating many files. You are deleting many files. You are creating a folders. You are deleting a folders. You are saving a lot of content in the file. You are modifying your file. You are playing with a lot of things. See here, I've opened a notepad and I'm typing it everything. How I'm able to open a notepad? Okay, notepad is an application, fine. But I'm typing everything, all these strings and I'm saving the file. Where it is getting saved, it is saved in the hard disk. Who is saving this file in the hard disk? Oh, it's a file system, sir, who is saving this file into the hard disk. Okay, so it means that a file system will take care of all the operations you do to a file or a folder, right? So for example, you are creating a file, you are deleting a file, you are doing a modification to the file, you are doing a modification to the file, you are changing the permission to the file, you are doing multiple activities to the file. Who will take care of everything? Oh, it's a file system model, file system management model in the operating system that will take care of all these things. Okay, beautiful. Okay, good. So any other things you have to know? Not this much is sufficient. You need not to know many things, but there are many other things are there. Okay, sir. So, yeah, but I have heard many things, sir. Like, for example, you have a VFAT file system, NTFS file system. What are those? Yes, those are all file system software. So, Windows, you know that for Windows family, we have a file system. Like, earlier there was a file system, there was a FAT file system, VFAT file system, NTFS file system, right? These are the file system for Windows family. For the Unix family, the traditional Unix family, for the Unix family, there were file system like UFS. Okay, UFS file system. Okay. For the Linux family, like the, there are file system like ext2 or ext3, ext4, ext5, extended file system five, Razor file system. Like that, sir. There are tons and tons of file systems are there. Like for example, HPFS file system. Okay, Coda file system. Network file system. You might have heard of NFS server. Network file system. Network file system. You might have heard about Android file system. AFS called the Android file system. HFS file system. Hierarchical uh, file system. HPFS means hierarchical priority file system. Right, and you have something known as a uh, uh, mm, proc file system. You could see there are so many file systems are there. 
So does all this file system does the same thing? What are yes, more or less it does the same operation. But there are there are again there are a lot of different different features other than each and every file system where each and every file system will support. Like for example, you have a semantic file system. You know you know about the semantic right? You have heard about semantic right? Antivirus. They have their own file system known as a VXFS file system. V uh, VXFS Veritas file system, CFS file system, like that. Cram file system like that. You have multiple file systems are there, guys. But I have to really learn as a developer. No, no, it's not really required. You, we are not into system level or something where you will be learning all this thing. But you should have an idea. That's all. Okay, these are all the file systems are there. File system will take off a lot of operation like creating a file, deleting a file, and everything. File system also will help you to navigate it. File system will always also do, uh, and also uh, you know, like uh, do a storage of the files into a disk actually. So what are the major operations, major functions where the file system does? The first thing is that actually it helps in the hierarchical, hierarchical, uh, sorry, I don't know, I mean, uh, I mean, my spelling might be wrong, hierarchical, I'm sorry, I might be wrong, hierarchical organization of your files and directories, the file system will take care of. What are the major functions of the file system? File system. Hierarchical organization or the arrangement of the files and directories of files and directories. Yes, XFS file system. Good, XFS file system. Yes, we have an XFS file system. We have a Razor file system. Anything. Yes, hierarchical origin of files and directories, storage of your files and directories, storage. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, navigation of your file or a directory navigation. You are you want to navigate to a particular path. The file system allow you to do a navigation of that. Okay, and uh, permissions, files and directories. You can change the files and directories permissions, right? You will do so many operations being a user, but who is supporting? Who is helping you to do all those things? The file system software. And finally, what happened? Right, you will be having a, uh, you know, like. A, uh, higher organization, storage, navigation, permission, and retrieval of the data. Retrieval of the data. Guys, now, you might have come across with some formulas. Like, for example, assume that this is your hard disk. This is a hard disk. This is a hard disk. This is a hard disk. And you know, in the market, there are different types of hard disks are there. And the most used hard disk uh, type is a SATA hard disk, we say. SATA or ATA hard disk. Serial ATA hard disk, we say. Earlier, we had a disk by name IDEA hard disk. IDEA hard disks were very older, but uh, right? Uh, you know, like in a very long back, like 20, 25 years back, right? you used to get a system right at your home. You know uh, the system and everything, and they used to give ID uh, ribbons and inside, and we used to you know connect that ribbons everything into the into your ID hard disk actually. So ID hard disk are very older hard disk actually. Now recently all the hard disk whatever we are having a very fast hard disk which we call the SATA hard disk or ADA hard disk we say. So if you have a ID hard disk or SATA sorry a SATA hard disk of uh, like around some uh, one TB, I'm just assume that one TB. Okay, this hard disk, right? You can create a multiple partition. Suppose you say that, sir, I want to create some four partitions. Okay, you create four partitions, sir, like this 250 GB of one partition, 250 GB of one more partition, 250 GB of one. Like that, four partitions you can create, or you will be creating it, right? So, in your Windows, if you're creating a four partition, what happened, right? You will give the name for this. This will be by default, it will be called as a C drive. C drive. And these other things you can keep your own name or it will take some default name like D drive, E drive, F drive, like that it will take it actually. C drive or the D drive, D drive or the F drive, whatever it takes, right? So this is your hard disk actually. It's a raw hard disk. It's a hard disk. And this hard disk, guys, if you take this 250 GB of hard disk, you know what you say? Hey, you will say in the local in the local way, you will say that, hey, hey format the disk, man, we'll say. You know, you have heard of this, right? Formatting a disk, actually. You might have heard, right? Hey, format the disk, man. We'll say, format the disk. Yes. What do you mean by formatting? Formatting means afresh or creating a file system on it. A creating a file system. is nothing but formatting. 
Now, if you take this disk, guys, if you take this 250 GB disk, and if you format it, this is a 250 GB, 250 GB. If you format it with any file system, suppose I'll take a Windows v NTFS file system. If I take a Windows NTFS file system, so what happened? I'm going to format this disk into the uh, you by using NTFS file system. So what usually happen, guys? A very thin layer. This is a disk. A very thin layer on on top of it, right? A very thin layer will be created. Let me right. A very small thin layer like this will get created on top of this disk. And this thin layer, what we call is a file system. So this is the NTFS file system layer. So what is it? It is a NTFS file system layer. So this thin layer, whatever you have, right? This is nothing but your NTFS file system layer. Sorry. So this thin layer, what we have is an NTFS file system. Clear, guys? So whenever you have a disk, whenever formatting disk means you are creating a file system on that. It is something like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, on top of this disk, right, a thin wrapper layer will get created. This is a file system. Now, whenever a user want to interact, want to communicate with the hard disk, it has to communicate. So here you have a user, some user or the application. He want to communicate with this disk. First, this user has to communicate with this file system. And then the file system will communicate with this hard drive or to the disk actually. So without this file system software, a user cannot communicate or he cannot even store the data also. Suppose you from the market, you bring a raw data. You go and you bring, uh, no, you can, uh, if you suppose assume that case, you in the Amazon, you go and you book the external uh, hard drive. You know, when they give the external hard drive, by default, it will have some basic operating system in it. So the basic operating system and basic file system. Like it will be having minimum VFAT or NTFS file system into it. Without a file system, you cannot uh, store any data at all. File system has to be there. Clear? Now here, if you go to the, if you go to here, the system, and this is a C drive. And if you go here, you do a right click. And if you go to the properties, can you see it is an NTFS file system? It's a local disk. And 250 GBs are RAM and 250. It is showing you how much is use space, how much is a, a free space and all, right? So it is showing you here it's a NTFS. NTFS is a it is a native file system of Windows family. Clear? So guys, any doubts you have till here? I know I'm little fast, uh, but so one of the component or one of the component of your you are operating some is a file system and these are the major operation where that file system will do it actually it allows it will it will make sure that the hierarchical organ, organization of files and data are there storage will be there navigation what is this hierarchical organization we'll discuss this after some time it allows you to store the data it allows you to navigate data it allows you to do any kind of a file permission change and finally retrieval of this data retrieval means once this data is stored in the disk Suppose assume that you want to again further access the data, you want to revoke the data, or you want to you want to view the data, or you want to modify the data, you want to retrieve the data. File system will also take care of retrieval of the data from the disk also. Is it clear, guys? So this is what it is. I will not go very much in detail again further because a lot of things are there to be discussed in a file system and uh, uh, in this file system management. But this is enough for us. One line information. Clear, guys. Any doubts you have? Please unmute and ask me. Okay. <clears throat> Fine. So guys, I might take some name because randomly I will take some name so that uh, I, I will uh, at least try to know. Suppose I will random take. Okay, Sai, did you understood it? Sai, Niranjan, Harshita. Uh, I know these people because they're part of my group. Sir, I understood. Good. Any other things? Any other question? Yes, sir. We are understanding. So we are not. See, uh, we have to understand all these things, guys. Without this understanding, if I try directly tell you and start with the commands and everything, no, that doesn't really good look good actually because you need to little bit understand about the operating system concept and then we'll f get into the command line and everything how linux was you know evolved how you can work on linux how to log into the terminal those so many things are there to learn but this is the very very basic level 
Okay, fine. Now, after that, what happened, right? We have a process management. You know that we will create, we'll be creating so many different processes in a system. We'll be running so many different applications, right? Who's going to create all the processes? So process, so we will be creating, I mean, as a user, we'll be creating so many processes, actually. So many processes will be creating. And whenever any application has to get executed by an operating system, a process has to be there. If you go to this diagram, if you go to this diagram, I will say that you are saying that, sir, I'm running this application. Fine. I, or else I'm running this Google Google Chrome application. I'll go directly like this and I'll just launch like this. I'll click double click on it. Ah, it got launched. So when it's getting launched, it is launching this browser. It means it is launching or it is running an application. How this application is getting launched or how this application is running? This application is running because that within an operating system, guys, there is a known as a process management that will create a process. So process management, PM, I'll say, process management will create the process, will create the process, will make it, will make the process to run. And finally, the process will get terminated or will get killed. Process will get terminated or be killed. So many things are there in the process management because whenever we are running an application, any application whenever we are executing, each and every application execution will happen via with help of a process. Without a process, a, a you cannot run any application at all. Process has to be there. Now the question comes that what is a process? Can anyone give me a textbook definition? So we uh, we can we call a process a set of protocols, sir? Uh, not uh, exactly. Uh, Vasu, I'm going to come up with that now with your question now. Okay, I'm I'm coming. I'm addressing your question now. Now, okay, good. So process a set of protocols is not not the right uh, answer, right? But near to that but not really the right answer so what is the process guys now for example whenever you are running any application or the program a process has to get created so we define a process is nothing but a running instance of a program in memory we call it as a process we call it as a process or a program in execution, we call it as a process. For everything, there has to be process. You know, you know, this is a system, this is a Windows operating system. So many processes are running. Suppose I want to see, you'll say, sir, do a right click here, go to the task manager, sir. Open this. Can you see this process are running? See, Google Chrome is running. So many background processes are running. So how these processes are running or how these applications are running? See, I'm open the MS Paint, some processes get caught created. It is using so much CPU. It is using so much of RAM memory, memory disk uh, networking. So many applications you are running, guys. How this application is getting executed or running? It is running with the help of a process. And who is creating that process? The process management, which is the part of the operation that will take care of creating a process, deleting a process, running a process, having an intercommunication between two different processes. So process management will also, PM will also, Take care of inter-process communication. Uh, sir, what do you mean by that inter-process? And scheduling the process. Uh, what do you mean by scheduling the process, sir? We need not to really worry that much, but just I'm trying to tell you, for example, for example, you have two different processes like this, process A and process B. There's a name. Each and every process has some naming also. We'll discuss all those things later. Process A and process B. If both this process, we want to communicate each other. Is there any way? Yes, there's a way, sir. That we call as a IPC, inter-process communication. We call that method as a inter-process communication. We call it an IPC. Inter-process communication. So there are inter-process communication tools are there. Like, for example, pipes, FIFOs, semaphore, message queues, shared memory, like that many are there. Pipes, FIFOs, semaphores, 
message queues oh my god sir what is this sir so many message queues shared memory yes do you have to learn all this thing not really required sir just you have to i mean at the very high level you have to understand okay something um, some question doubt my sir why we have to really do this communication sir what is the need yeah we need it man so many times we need for example some of your linux user you might know right some of you linux already know you have said you know that in a linux machine i will say that hey please execute uh, please execute a command to display all the process what you will do ps hyphen ef pipe it to grab or pipe it to less command you know you are using this less pipe symbol you are using is this pipe is an interface communication yes sir this pipe is an interface communication sometime you might execute some big command like this df hyphen h pipe it to uh, grab hyphen i uh, like uh, uh, grab hyphen i something you will use uh, okay grab hyphen i something you use uh, again you say pipe it to right pipe it to something you will use like cut command so you will be tending you will be tend to do lot of things uh, by using this pipe symbols this pipe is not but it is a interpass communication only means that you are communicating from one command to other command using pipes so ipc will act like a interprocess communication mechanism between two different processes so like that we have our different techniques okay fine so what is the process man will take care it will take care of the creating a process having intercommunication between different process and uh, you know like even the scheduling the processes like we will be uh, because cpu has to schedule lot of processes lot of process will be executed by the operating system or the cpu right each and every process will be given some kind of a priority or it will be given some kind of a uh, you know like time slice so each and every process will get time, some time slot to get executed by the cpu so how the time slot will be ordered with the help of a scheduling algorithm you have lot of scheduling algorithms like you have a priority based preemptive scheduler right you have a cfs uh, scheduler right uh, you have a Uh, round robin scheduler like that lot of schedulers are there those all schedulers are also part of the process management sometime when you are working as a system level programmer or when you are working in a devops in the system level you will be asked to, to write a script to monitor all the processes which has got the priority to monitor all the processes which are having uh, which are having a high priority so in that case you should understand okay what is by scheduling the process and everything okay you should understand and there is a way to how to uh, you know check all the details i will tell you later how to check all the details about what is the priority of the process and everything i will go in detail after some time not now okay so okay fine after this process management as i said earlier guys whenever you are running any application so whenever you are running any application the application has to get executed by the process it has to get executed by the process this is a process actually so suppose i'm i'm running a google chrome a google chrome will get executed by the process actually so process has to bit inter get created by the operating system itself and the process will start getting executed by the operating system so this process which is running right this process will have information about the google chrome but in a very high level if you see each and every process each and every process will have a different components altogether if you uh. some of you if you are from the computer science background background and all you might have come up with some something in the process right like for example you have something known as a uh uh we have different segments like for example text segment data segment text <laughs> segment is have you come across with these things i mean i'm i'm not expecting from everyone i'm just telling you some of you who have learned the computer science back engineering act segment heat segment heat segment these are the different components of the processes unit processes and some kind of an environment variable environment variable pending signals oh my god so many things are there to understand okay this whole thing a process holds actually whenever running any process each and every process will have all these components it has a text segment it has a data segment it has a stack segment it has a heap segment it has an environment variable it has some kind of a pending signals lot of things are there this we hold together we call it as a process so it means that rajesh if i am running any application i am uh, as you said earlier i am running a command like you said you know, in one of the thing like i am executing some commands like in this, this i am running some commands ls command date command 
So for execution of this commands also a process to get traded. Yes, sir. A process has to get traded. Okay. So, but I'm running a different, different commands in a different, different terminals. Thus, it requires, guys, can you unmute it, please, yourself? So every command execution, a process has to be there, sir. And each and every process will have these components. It has a text segment, data segment, stack segment, heap segment, environment variable. All these things will be there in each and every process. Okay. Fine. Something I'm understanding. Okay, a process will be there, and every process will have something. This process will get executed by the system or the CPU. And finally, this process is the one which is going to do execution of that application. So whenever I'm running an LS command, I'm just telling you, LS command, a process will get created. A process will have all this complete Once the once the process will get executed, the process will give the output of the LS output, LS command output. And it will display in the terminal. So when the process is running, the process will be executed by the CPU. And once the process will get executed by the CPU, when it completes its task, the process will get killed and the process is going to return a value. Right? And that process which is returning, it will be returning an output of the LS command. Similarly, when I'm launching any uh, Google Chrome, you might have seen, right? When I'm launching a Google Chrome, I'm doing a double click here. What is it double clicking, guys? When I do a double click here, you're actually executing an application. As a user, I'm actually doing a running an application. When you're running an application, right? What a process will get created. This process is going to launch this browser. It's going to launch this browser. Yes. For custom call. Yes. Yes. We will discuss all these things. Yes. Correct. <laughs> clear, guys. Still here. I will come up to you, Ram. Don't worry. I'll come to your question. I'm just uh, covering a very high level. I'll, in the next thing, I'm go. I'll go a little bit more in uh, uh, one more level deeper. I will go. Don't worry. Okay. So, guys, still here. You have any doubts before proceeding? Anyone? Anybody is having any kind of uh, a basic, simple doubt? Also, can ask anything. Okay. No. Fine. I have one doubt, Rajesh. Please. Good. I don't know whether it is related to this or not. Uh, that uh, what is that thread dump there? Someone was speaking like a thread yes, dump. Yes, 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 sir. Very good, very good, sir. Those are I will come across. See, why I'm telling you all these things because as a DevOps engineer, sir, you will be working on all those things. Like for example, if you're working as a DevOps engineer, you might have come across a, a developer asking you, "Hey, please create, yeah. please create, please create, yeah. or please take uh, take up the thread dump and heap dump." Take up the heat dump and the heat dump. So, for taking a thread dump, sir, there is a command of the JSTAC command. JSTAC command, you'll use it to create a thread dump if some of you are aware of it. Okay. For taking a heap dump, HTPROF is a command which we'll be using for taking a, uh, no, sorry, uh, JMAP, I think. Yeah. JMAP is a command for using, for JMAP. Not IMAP. JMAP is a command which used to create a heap dump. Now, guys, so I will answer this question now. Now, for example, you know, whenever you're running any application, the application will get executed and the, pro or the or by the process and the process will have all, the, all these things. Fine. Good. But actually what happened right, as things were getting progress, when the Linux operation came into existence, Linux is called uh, whenever you're creating any process, any process in Linux, Linux is called as a Linux process is called as a lightweight process. It is called as a lightweight process. In Linux, we call it as a lightweight process. A lightweight process. Why we call it a lightweight process? We say that in each and every process creation or whenever any process is created in Linux operating system, a minimum of one thread of execution will always be there. One thread. So this is a kind of a thread actually. A thread will be there. Thread will be there inside the process. A minimum of single thread will be there. So this thread is the one which who's going to take care of execution of the whole application or the program, right? If you go to the Google, see if we go to the Google, just say Linux light weight process. See what is a lightweight process in Linux? See in computer, a lightweight process LWP is, is mean of achieving a multitasking. Okay, it is achieving a multitasking. You might have come across. See, 
you could see that in the traditional meaning of the term, as in Unix operating system or Solaris or LWP runs a user space and top of the single, in the in case of uh, Linux, uh, a single kernel thread uh, shares the process address space and blah, blah, blah. You have come across with some token as a thread. Don't worry now, what is it? See, for every process, there will be like thread like this, actually. See, I think it is highlighted like this. See, for every process, there will be a thread, actually. A thread is an execution of a, a smallest sequence of a program instruction that can be managed independently by a scheduler. So I cannot go very much in detail, but you have to understand in a very high level that uh, that every process will have a single thread. Now, with the help of a thread library, somebody has developed a thread libraries. Thread libraries. Okay. Thread libraries. That thread libraries we call the NTLP. NTLP thread libraries. You go to the Google and you just say, NTLP thread libraries. Native POSIX thread libraries. Eh, sorry, NPTL, sorry, NPTL. Native Port POSIX thread libraries. So this is the thread library which is used for creating a multiple threads actually. And this was heavily used. This NTLP is heavily used in C++ in Java. Why Java and uh, C++ and other program language become very famous? Because it supports the multi-threaded. Oh, people who were very good in application developer, right? When they used to go for an interview, they'll ask you, hey, do you know about multi-threaded? Have you used the multi-threaded in your Java application program? Yes, sir, I have used it. Can you show me how you de de develop it and how you're going to schedule each and every multi-threads? So what happened, right? When you're using a multi-thread library in your application, what in each and every process you can achieve? No, you can create a multiple threads like that. Now you might ask a question, sir, why we need a multiple threads? Because, sir, for example, you're having this application. I'm just telling you very high level, don't worry. In your application, guys, there is something as a function, we say. Like, there's a lot of functions are there. Function one, function two. Don't worry, all these things. I'm not making you to scare, to, no, I'm not making you scared to understand all the things, but just understand high level. So you're having four function in your program. You can tell your process to completely execute all these four functions alone by a single process. But by achieving a multi-threading, what you can do, no, you can tell each and every thread to execute that particular function. Okay, thread number one, you tell to execute function one. Thread number two, you tell to execute this function. Thread number three, you execute this function. Now, what happened, right? During execution of your program or the application, that particular thread might get failed. Or because while when it is executing that particular function, the execution of that function might not happen properly due to which the whole program will get failed. It will create a thread dump. So that's what the developer want to take that thread dump for particular thread only because what it was doing when it was executing this particular function three, right? When this got failed, what was the output? Why it got failed? All those information will get in the thread dump. That's the reason you'll be asked to create take a thread dump. Is it clear? Yeah, Posix. I explain. Yes. POSIX yes, is a standard actually. Krishna, I will tell you about later. Okay, good. Yeah. So every thread execution, it will take care of execution of a particular function, we say. That is what we call the thread actually. And a multi-threaded is nothing but in your application or in each and every single process, you can create a multiple threads. How these multiple threads are created? By using some thread libraries. That's what you have to know. No more than, don't learn, understand more than this actually. Guys. Clear? Okay, good. Yeah, right. Okay, Vaibo, you had some question. Uh, Krishna, I know you have asking some POSIX. Very good question. I will answer you about this. POSIX in our portable operating system interface. Very good, sir. I'm going to explain about this. Note it down somewhere about this. I'm going to, you know, I have to come across with these things, everything. POSIX means portable operating system interface. I don't know where to write it, but okay, I will write in a other notepad. POSIX. Portable operating system interface. Okay, good. Okay. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys. So, now, uh, there are many things that are scheduling about everything I told about. There are a lot of scheduling algorithms are there in the process management model of your operating system. Those things and all, we will see later. Don't worry now. Okay. So, process is nothing but you have to just understand it's a running instance of a program in memory. So, whenever you exit any application, a process to get created. Fine. Good. 
or a program in execution we call the process. Sometime in some interview, they might ask you, okay, for a fresher, they might ask you, what is the process? How you define a process? You have to say that it is a running instance of a program in memory. Whenever any application has to be executed by your operating system, it has to create a process. Without a process, any application cannot get executed at all. There has to be a process. And every process has a name, it has a PID, it has so many resources. And but in a very high level, uh, we said that every process will have this different segments like text segment, data segment, stack segment, heap segment, invulnerable, pending signal, blah, blah, blah. So many things are there actually. If you Google it out, you will get all these components also. What are the process components? If you uh, Google out, right, you'll get all these things. Google. Okay, fine. Now coming back here. Okay, what uh, once, okay, after the process management, memory management, you know that every process creation. Whenever you're creating any process or whenever any process to get executed, the process needs some memory you know, to run. Without a memory, a process cannot run at all. There has to be some memory given to this each and every process. And that memory is put by your memory management. Okay. That is one thing. Second thing. So whenever you want to, uh, whenever anything it is going on, whenever you're doing any kind of a computing, if all computing happen in the RAM memory only. Right. So RAM memory, you need to manage the RAM memory for the managing the RAM memory. You need a memory management of the operating system. So memory management of the operating system will take care of the functioning of RAM memory. It also takes care of allocating. Allocating. The memory for each process execution. And it also uh, involved in transferring the data from primary memory to the secondary memory. From the primary to the secondary memory. Uh, what do you mean by that? If for example, in a very high level, I'm going to tell. You know very well that here you have something as a user. Okay. So we'll take some name. I will take a name of uh, Kiran only. I will take a name, Kiran, because it is simple to type. Kiran, I'll take as a name. So Kiran, Kiran is a user who has logged into the system or the server. Here you have an operating system. Good. Here you have a hardware. Very good. In the hardware, you have so many <coughs> different hardware. One of the different hardware is nothing but your hard disk. Yes, it is very good. So this is nothing but your hard drive. Hard drive, hard disk. Now, Kiran might be doing a lot of operation onto a file. He might create a file. He, uh, what Kiran will do, he'll create a file. Like the file name is something like Alice. Alice is a file, and he'll start say, typing some data into the inside the file. Hi, how are you? Something. He will start typing some program or some text into the file. Now, when he's doing an operation. All this operation initially it will be there in your RAM memory. This is this is your operating system. Okay, let me write. This is an operating system. Okay, and this is a hard disk, and this is your RAM memory. This is your RAM memory. This is your RAM memory. This is your RAM memory, right? So whenever a Kiran user, he's doing some kind of, a, he's creating a file and he's trying to type some text inside file. All this computation, guys, initially, all this computation, initially, it will be happening in your RAM memory. Here, in, inside this RAM memory, it will be happening. It means that your data is still in the RAM memory. Once you save this file, what the operating system will do, automatically it will save this file, uh, file name and the content, everything into the hard drive. It will save it actually. It will save it actually. Right? So transferring the data from your primary memory, that is RAM, to the secondary memory, the hard disk, is also taken care by your memory management. So memory management will take care of transferring the data. That's what I said that memory management of model will take care of transferring the data from your primary memory or from the RAM memory to the hard disk. And again, from the hard disk back to the RAM. Suppose you want to open that file again. So what are the files which then hard drive? You have to uh, load it into a RAM, right? That also will be taken care by your memory management. So memory management is one of the very, very toughest uh, 
very critical, very uh, important component of your operating system. Very difficult to understand also. It is not that easy to understand. It is very difficult because there are a lot of algorithms are there. How this all will work by, there are algorithms like body system algorithm, slab allocator, paging, segmentation uh, units, and all. so many things are these things, which you have, which we need not to understand, but I'm just telling you, see, what is body system algorithm? There are what so many things you are telling. I mean, yeah, that's but it's from algorithm is a memory management and allocation algorithm that divides memory into the power of twos and tri C. Slab allocators, see slab allocators, allocators in operating in Linux. See, these are all memory management. See the cast objects and everything. Beautiful, sir. All this concept very beautiful. See what is paging in Linux. Have you heard about all these things, guys? Clear. Paging is a basic function memory band for the computer operating system as well. See how this paging unit works. Beautiful. This concept is very beautiful, guys. But as a DevOps engineer, we need not to know all these things. But we have to only understand at a high level. That's all. Because why I'm doing no? Because why I'm telling all this? Because you will come across with a lot of commands related to the memory management. You will come across with a lot of commands related to the process management. You will come across with a lot of commands related to the file management, file system management. You will come across with all those commands. That's what you can correlate. Okay, when I'm working on that particular command, oh, that particular command will fall under the file system management. Okay, I'm working on some commands. So <coughs> that command will come under the process management. I might work. For example, in your system, you know, some of you know that I'll be running a command, the free command. Free command, basically, it will give you the RAM size. When you are executing this command, it will interact with the memory management model of your operating system. Similarly, you have some commands that swap on, swap off. These commands are there in Linux. We will come across with all these commands. Don't worry. So you will be uh, doing a lot of uh, commands. So what I'm trying to tell that there are commands are there which are related so that you you can correlate okay when i'm executing that command okay it might be touching that particular model of the operating system like that okay clear sir any other doubts sir till here i know uh, it is little complicated to understand but please learn in this way only there is no shortcut you have to learn in this way only clear okay now very important device management. You know, see, there are many devices are there. If you see the diagram here, this is a hard drive. Sorry, this is a hardware, and this hardware is not but the lowest component. And as I said, like your operating system will always come with the hardware, right? Because without uh, the operating system, you the user or the application cannot interact with the hardware. So there has to be an operating system. So. So many hardware are there. You have a RAM memory, you have a hard disk memory, you have a keyboard, you have a mouse, we have a keyboard, right? You have a keyboard, like this is a keyboard device, you have a keyboard, you have a mouse. So many hardware are there, guys. E each and every hardware, whenever the operating system has to communicate with each and every hardware, it can communicate via with the help of a device management. So device management is very important. It is one of the subsystem of your operating system where it will allow, it will communicate to the hard, hard drive. Now you will say, sir, uh, I'm, I'm seeing this screen, sir. This is a terminal. See how nicely I'm seeing this desktop. How actually I'm seeing this desktop, sir? How I'm able to view? Uh, because that there is something known as a terminal driver or the frame buffer driver, which is making you to see the screen itself, actually. Display the screen actually. This is a LED screen, right? Or water screen. It is displaying some nice things. Right? How it is happening, everything through a terminal driver which is running in an operating system or through the main uh, buffer uh, or driver which is running in an operating system and that too in, inside the device management model. Oh, beautiful. See, we are doing so much conversion. I'm, I'm using the headset to communicate. So my mic is there, my, uh, you know, my uh, headset is there. So how I'm doing, I'm doing an audio transcription here. What is happening here in the inside here in the device management? You are having a audio driver. Audio driver is there. Video drivers are there. Oh my God. So many things are there. All these are called as device drivers. So you have mainly all these drivers are categorized into character driver, block driver, network driver. Network driver. What else? You have some kind of a miscellaneous driver. Miscellaneous driver. Like for example, you know, like for example, you have your pen drive. 
the pen drive is called as a SCSI drive, SCSI device. The pen drive is called a SCSI device actually. The pen drive, the pen drive is a SCSI device. Pen drive is a pen drive is a SCSI device. SCS, a SCSI device. So to communicate to the pen drive, guys, you need a SCSI driver. It's a SCSI driver. Just see. Go to the Google. Just say SCSI. SCSI driver. In Linux. See. SCSI interface guide. See. I mean, <laughs> you need not to know all these things. But I'm just telling you. See. You have some kind of a protocol bus driver or so many things are there, sir. You'll be, you have, you, it's not like you have to learn all these things. I'm just telling you. So under this SCSI devices, so many devices will come. Actually, so SCSI is a specific driver which is used to communicate with the pen drive. As soon as you plug in the pen drive in your operating system or in your machine, right? What happened? Your machine is going to detect the device and it is going to, uh, you know, make sure that it communicates the device. How it is communication happening because of this SCSI device? Where this SCSI device is running, sir, it is running as a part of the device management model of your operating system. Superb, sir. Okay, very good. So it means that when you come over here, you will say that, sir, operating system has to come with the hardware, right? Who is actually communicating with the hardware? It is a device driver which is communicating with the hardware. So within the operating system, there is a device management model is there. Within the device management model, the drivers are running. The drivers are going to communicate with the hardware. hardware. Okay, sir. Fine. Got it. Good. Now, what about the network management? You know that you will be doing so many networking uh, communication. You know that I am since I have, have a system, and I have a network card which is there in my system, and I have a Wi-Fi connectivity which is there, so that you could see that I have connected to the Wi-Fi here. Can you see? I am connected to this Wi-Fi here. When I am connected to Wi-Fi, it means that I am available over the internet. So how you can communicate to the outside world? You can communicate to the outside world because in your operating system there is a network management is there. So network management model, what it does, it will take care of sending the network packet. Receiving the network packet, right? And doing a lot of things like you can set up the firewall. You can uh, uh, you can set up the um, you can uh, do a TCP/IP communication, UDP communication. So many protocol communication you are doing everything, right? HTTP communication, or HTTPS communication, whatever you are doing, everything is taken care by your network management model of your operating system. So whatever the command, for example, in your Linux, sir, whenever you want to check the IP address of your machine, I will execute a command as if config. This is a command to check the IP address of your system. Correct. When you are executing this command, this command will actually interact with your network management model of your operating system. Literally, it will communicate. It. Similarly, in Windows, I have an IP config command. For example, if I open the command line, CMD, command line, see, if I run IP config, see, if I run this command, IP config, you could see that what is an IP address of my machine? The IP address of my machine is 192.168.0.117. This is the IP address of my machine, actually. Can I ping it? Yes, you can ping it. 192.168. You are pinging. We are actually communicating to yourself. We can ping to this machine. Right? In the Linux, it is if config command. Or else you can even use the command as the IP command. IP with the IP ADDR command also will display the IP address. Sorry, not this here. I should have written here. Anyway, guys, I will come across with all these things. Don't worry. IP ADDR. This is also one of the command. You might have, there is one more command, the MTR command. <laughs> Using that command also, you can display the IP address. But use mostly people use the if config command. This is the most important command. People use it actually. So now, in a very high level, with one line information that we understood that there are five different components of operating system, file management, process management, memory management, device management, and network management. Yes, we need to know a basic understanding about all these different 
subsystem of your operating system. Guys, any question? Yes, sir. I tables and all, IP tables and all. Yeah, we will discuss those things later, sir. Okay, it is setting uh, IP tables are basically used for setting up the rules and everything. So you can set the uh, like uh, uh, like you can set some kind of a rules and everything. That uh, Krishna, if you ask me specifically, that is a little bit out of our uh, you know, the discussion. Whatever you're doing, but you separately connect with me. I will tell you about IP tables. Okay. Rajesh, yeah, Linux and Linux both same or is it different? Linux, coming Linux and Linux. Uh, Linux and Unix. Yes, I will come across with it, sir. I will come across with this. Okay, sir. With, with that now, with your point, yeah. But are you come? Are you okay with this, sir? How you are feeling? Are you feeling too difficult or too much information is pushed to you so that you are not able to understand? Or how you feel? What do you feel? If I feel, if you feel, some of you say that, sir, not me, I'm not able to understand many things. And also, I will uh, cut short my discussion or I will make it more simpler so that you'll understand it in a better way. And also, I want to ask every each one of you, are you okay with the frequency which I'm speaking? If I'm too fast, please let me know. I will slow down myself so that you'll be able to understand. How do you feel, guys? Are you okay with this uh, pace? Yes, sir. It's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, it is fine. Yes, sir. It's okay. Or others, guys, others, people, 33, 34. Uh, yeah, like, okay. it's okay, sir. Yeah, it is good. It's good, uh, it's good, sir. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. So, are you finding interesting or it is boring or what is it? <laughs> interesting? Yes, sir. It's going very amazing and interesting, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> good. Now, so, after this, uh, Okay. Uh, it is 10.15. I think we started the session at what time? 8.30. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop the session now. Uh, we will, uh, what time we can connect again? 11.15? Yes, sir. Okay. Eleven fifteen, we will connect. Eleven fifteen to one fifteen, one thirty, we will we will continue our session. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. So, so today, sir, I think... good question. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, on eleven fifteen, what are the topics you are going to discuss? Okay. Now, what happened? The next thing comes is about the Linux. Now, how Linux mm -hmm. came into the picture? Uh, we'll discuss something about uh, like uh, what are the different operations came into it and. and uh, how the Linux evolved and how Linux came to the picture. What are the, we'll be getting into the Linux now actually. Okay. And also we'll discuss about something on our user space, kernel space, uh, you know, like what is a shell is all about. Okay. Uh, what is a shell exactly? So, so many other things are there we'll be discussing now. Okay. Thank you. Hmm? Clear, sir. Okay. So let me stop this session so that uh, I'll stop this recording.